Mrs. Sangison. I teach uh, fourth grade math at Mandeville Middle School. And today, I thought I would teach you guys something that's not only mathematic, but it's also really practical, especially for what's going on right now. So I noticed when I went to the grocery store that there was a lot of problems buying bread. So I decided instead of buying up as much as I could or paying a really high price for bread, I decided to make my own. So this is a really cool recipe. It's a recipe called Miracle No Need Bread because you don't have to need the bread. So it's really cool. It only takes four ingredients. So I have, uh, I have all purpose flour. I have salt. The recipe really calls for kosher salt, but I use this one works just fine. Um, I also have rapid rise yeast and I have some room temperature water. So I figured the first thing we need to do is we need to do some math. I have some measurements here. I have my teaspoons and I have my uh, different size measuring cups. So I have a math problem. This first thing I need to do is I need to understand that when I'm doing something really cool like uh, baking, I'm gonna have to use addition, I'm gonna have to use fractions, and I'm gonna have to use measurement. So, Mrs. Sanguson wants to bake some bread. Her recipe is for one loaf, but she would like to make three. How much does she need of each ingredient? It's really important that I know how much of each ingredient to make, otherwise my bread's not gonna be so tasty and it's not gonna work out so well. So, this is the real, actual recipe. So let's go ahead and figure out how much we need of each ingredient. So first off, I know that my fourth graders, we haven't started multiplying fractions just yet. We were about to. So we're gonna do this with repeated addition. And it'll still do the same thing because we know that multiplication is just repeated addition. So first thing I wanna do is I would like to go ahead and figure out my three cups of flour. Well, my my word problem says that I have a recipe for one loaf, but I need to make three. So that means I need to triple my recipe. So three cups, three times, or three cups for the first batch, three cups for the second batch, and three cups for the third batch. That gives me all together, three plus three plus three is gonna give me nine cups of flour. Now when we're baking, it's really important to pay attention to our unit of measurement. So in this case, we have nine cups of flour. So you may have different sized measuring cups. Here, I have one that has only a single cup. That's the largest measurement. This one is for two cups. And this is my largest one, it's four cups. So since I need nine cups of flour, I'm gonna use this two times because four plus four is eight plus I'm also going to use my single cup measurement. So that would give me four plus four is eight plus one more is gonna give me my nine cups that I need. So see how fun math is? Math is super important when you wanna make things that are delicious. So next thing I need to do is figure out how much salt I need. So I know for my first batch, I need one and one half teaspoon of salt. For my second batch, I need another one and one half teaspoon of salt. And for my third batch, I need a third one and one half teaspoon of salt. So I know that when I have one whole and a fraction, this is called a mixed number. And I know that a mixed number is really a whole number plus a fraction. So what I'm going to do is in between each of these mixed numbers, I'm going to separate them. I'm going to decompose them. So I have one whole plus a half plus one whole plus a half plus one whole plus a half. So I know because of the commutative property, I can go ahead and separate this just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my numbers around. And this is kind of tricky. So I'm going to put my whole numbers together. So I've got one, two, three whole numbers. One plus one plus one. Then I also want to put my fractions together. One half plus one half plus one half. Now we can all see that our, my, my actual problem is still exactly the same. I just moved the numbers around to make it a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and take my whole numbers. One plus one plus one. 
that gives me three holes. And I know one half plus another half is gonna give me another hole. And I still have one half left over. So all together, that gives me three plus four plus a half gives me four and one half teaspoons of salt. Phew, that was a lot of work for one ingredient. Next, I have one half a teaspoon of yeast. So I need to go ahead and figure out what to do with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to my whiteboard and I'm gonna say, well, I have one half for the first batch, one half for the second batch, and one, bat, uh, one half for the third batch. So again, I remember that one half plus one half is gonna give me one whole, okay? And I have this other fraction out by itself. So one, I have one whole plus a half, and that's gonna give me one whole and one half, so one and a half teaspoons of yeast. It's really important you don't use a lot of yeast, otherwise you're gonna give yourself like a really, really, really big piece of bread. And that's just too much, we don't need all that. Um, lastly, I have my one and one half cups of water. Now one thing I noticed is I already did one and one half three times. Remember I did that with the teaspoon of salt. The big difference is the salt was a teaspoon and the water is in cups. So the big change, the math is still gonna be exactly the same because my numbers are the same. The big difference is my units of measurement. So again, I'm gonna go back to my whiteboard and I have one and one half plus one and one half plus one and one half. I already did all that work, so I remember that one and one half plus one and one half plus one and one half is gonna give me four and a half. But now I just need to label my, my answer correctly. This time I'm gonna use cups, and that's how many cups of water, okay? Perfect. So now I have my whole recipe. So my recipe calls for, if I wanna make this a triple recipe, so uh, Ms. Sangerson wants to make one loaf, uh, has a recipe for one loaf of bread, now I'm gonna make it into three loaves of bread. My new recipe is going to be nine cups of flour, four and a half teaspoons of salt, one and a half teaspoons of yeast, and four and a half cups of water. So my math is done. Now it's just a matter of just putting it all together. So you're gonna notice that this is going to give you like a really, really sticky, sticky mix. And that's okay, it's supposed to be like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them all together. I'm gonna make a big, big super batch. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate into three different batches because remember, I wanna make three loaves of bread. Then I'm gonna take, once I have my mix all together, I'm gonna to go ahead and cover it with plastic wrap. And I'm gonna let it sit on my counter, covered in plastic wrap, for eight, 12 to 18 hours. The easiest thing to do is to do this at night, put the cover over it, and wait until the morning before you do anything. It's really overnight is best. That way you're not watching your rice. So what you're gonna do is the next day, so tomorrow, so today I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna make the mix, and tomorrow I'm gonna actually bake the bread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Dutch oven. Your mom and dad will know what a Dutch oven is, okay? I'm gonna take my Dutch oven, and I'm gonna preheat my oven to 450 degrees. That's really, really hot, so you gotta be really, really super careful, okay? You're gonna take your Dutch oven, and once your oven is 450 degrees, you're gonna warm your Dutch oven with nothing in it. And you're gonna put that in there so the whole Dutch oven gets really, really hot. You're gonna leave it in there for 30 minutes. Then what you're gonna do is, you're going during, while that's um, heating up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some parchment paper. Parchment paper is not like wax paper, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my mixture on my parchment paper, with some flour. And that flour is gonna keep it from sticking to the bottom of the parchment paper. And I'm going to just put my, I'm gonna roll it into a ball and I'm going to just let it wait until that Dutch oven has heated up all the way. Then I, with some gloves or with some uh, pot holders, I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna put my whole parchment paper 
the whole thing. I'm gonna put that right in my Dutch oven and I'm gonna heat that for 30 minutes with the cover on. At 30 minutes, I'm gonna take the cover off and I'm gonna let it continue to cook for 15 minutes. And then, that's it, my bread is done. No kneading required, it's super easy, and it's some of the most delicious, rustic Tuscan bread you've ever had. So your parents will be so glad that you learned how to do math and fractions. So thank you guys so much, I hope that helps, and I can't wait to see you guys again really, really soon. I miss my kids.